So here is a question about interference and diffraction of light. All right, we're told that monochromatic light with a wavelength of 550 nanometers is incident on a pair of slits right, separated by 0 0.025 millimeters and each with a width of 5 micrometers right, or micrometers. A uh, screen is located 2 meters from the slits. All right, so let's draw this out first. Um, so maybe let's say this is the screen and here are the slits. Okay, so this distance here is, uh, we'll label it as D, alright? It's the slit separation and A here is the um, slit width, alright? And this screen is, we'll call it a distance L away. Okay, so let's label those quickly. Um, A was uh, 5.0 micrometers, all right, that's 10 to the minus 6. D was 0 0.025 millimeters, 10 to the minus 3. Um, lambda was 550 nanometers, which is 10 to the minus 9. All right, we're going to need to remember all of those because we need to do math in SI units eventually. So, um, in general, what we get here will be both interference and diffraction. All right, diffraction from the um, in individual slits themselves, and interference from light going uh, between uh, both slits. So, uh, generally, that looks like looks like this. All right, so we have this diffraction envelope that looks something like this. Right, and inside of that diffraction, what we actually see is um, interference. So we see uh, tightly spaced interference that gets uh, less intense with diffraction, and more intense, and then less intense, but it's all equally spaced here. All right, so what I've plotted here is intensity as a function of position. Okay, so uh, again, the, um, the inside uh, red here, that's interference, and the envelope, the blue um, kind of curve that this follows uh, in a broad sense, is the diffraction. <clears throat> so let's remind ourselves quickly what, um, how this depends on, uh, on the distances here, the wavelengths and things. So for interference, Um, we say that d times sine theta equals an integer number of wavelength. All right, so that's m theta, uh, where m can be uh, we'll put it in here. m can be zero, plus or minus one, plus or minus two, and so forth. All right, so theta theta is the uh, angle to a point of interest. All right, so to a particular point here. It's not straight. Okay. Uh, we have some theta. We could also define some um, vertical distance or per, um, horizontal distance y here. All right. So um, if L is big compared to uh, compared to y, really, if L is big compared to y, then uh, we can rewrite this as d times y sub m over L equals M lambda. All right, and the subscript M is just to say um, there are a bunch of peaks, right? There's a peak here, 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 here. Um, so those correspond to various M values, right? So M equals zero is the center. M equals one goes out one, uh, two, three, four, and the minuses just go the other direction. So minus one, minus two, minus three, and so forth. All right, so that's, um, that describes the interference. Uh, I should mention, though, that these are the maxima, meaning these are to the peaks of these bright spots. All right, so let's, let's put a box around that. All right, so now I should describe the diffraction as well. Um, so for diffraction,
for diffraction we say um, A, which is the slit width, times uh, sine theta equals P sub lambda. So this is um, sine theta P, where P in this case does not start at zero. It starts at one, plus or minus one, plus or minus two, uh, and so forth. Right. And we can do the same trick if, uh, if L is large compared to Y. We can say A times uh, Y sub P over L is P times lambda. Right? And we shouldn't mention that these are minima, meaning um, these P's are to the dark spots. Right? That's why there's no zero, because the center is actually a bright spot. But the first dark spot, we could say right here, that's p equals 1. And right here, that's p equals minus 1, and then minus 2, and minus 3, so forth. Alright. Uh, so, there you can't see that equation, but now you can. So again, a times y sub p over l equals p times lambda. So we'll put a box around that. Okay, so um, now we can read the question, now that we're, we're fully prepped. Uh, so let me bring the question back into view. Um, so the first question is, how far from the center of the resulting pattern on the screen is the first diffraction ma uh, minimum? So we're talking about diffraction. So we're going to use the diffraction equation, which I'll bring back into view in a second. And we're looking for how far from the center is the first peak. So we're looking for this distance. So we're solving for a y. Right, so let me move this back into view. Um, so we can simply use this equation and say, since we're looking for the first one, p is going to equal 1. All right. So for a, we'll say um, a times y sub p. In fact, let me solve this for p, since that's or for y. Since that's what we're solving for, I'll say y um, equals uh, p lambda L over A. P lambda L over A. Alright, and we're looking for y1, right? We're looking for y where uh, p equals 1. So y1 is 1 times, uh, lambda is 550 nanometers, so it's times 10 to the minus 9 meters. L is 2 meters, so I don't have to change that. And A is 5 micrometers, so it's 5 times 10 to the minus 6 meters. And if you do that math, what you end up with is 0 0.22 meters, or 22 centimeters. Um, either is correct, but we'll just say 22 centimeters. Okay, so that's how big our pattern is, or that's kind of the scale of the size of this um, diffraction pattern. So, uh, question B, we'll move that back into view here. Question B is, how many interference bright spots are in the broad central peak defined by diffraction? Okay, so what we're asking is, um, uh, the broad central peak defined by diffraction, that's this large peak. And inside of that, we have bright fringes due to interference. All right, and that's not a fixed value that changes with d, right? So we could imagine the same a, but a different, a varying d, for different uh, sets of slits, and you would change that. How many of these are in here, right? So we want to know for these specific dimensions, for a equals five microns and d equals 0.025 millimeters, how many fringes do we get inside? All right. So again, we're going to be looking at interference. Um, so I'll put uh, B here, and I'm going to do the same trick. I'm going to solve for Y sub M this time. Um, so as a reminder, here's the equation. I'm solving for Y sub N, so I'm going to multiply by L and divide by D, and I get um, M times lambda times L over D. Okay, so um, I don't know M um, quite yet, but I do know lambda, L, and D are. Those are fixed values. So I'm going to plug those in and just leave M out by itself. So lambda was 550 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. 
L was 2 meters, and D is um, 0 0.025 um, millimeters, so that's 10 to the minus 3 meters. All right. So when you do that math, what you get is M times uh, 0 0.044 meters. Right? Or we could write this as M times 4.4 centimeters. Okay? So um, this actually gives me a way to say uh, what M pushes these fringes beyond the edge of this pattern. Right? Because M equals 1 is the, well, let's say M equals 0 is the center. M equals 1 is the first one. And that gives me 4.4 centimeters. All right? Remember, out here is... Um, 22 centimeters. So I've got a way to go. I can go another one, so m equals 2 is 8.8, .8 and so forth. And it turns out, for m equals 5, so we'll say this down here, y5 is actually uh, 22 centimeters. All right. So that means y equals 5 falls exactly where p equals 1 does. So if I label that here, this point is y equals uh, minus 5, right? and this point is y equals positive 5. So what that means is that um, I have a bright spot from interference exactly overlaying this dark spot from diffraction. So you wouldn't actually see it because the dark, the dark one wins. But um, we have a central peak. This is uh, um, y equals, uh, sorry I should be able to, it's not y, but m equals, m equals uh, positive 5 and m equals negative 5. m equals 0 is the center and then uh, m equals 5 is over here and 5 and minus 5 are over here. So um, there have to be four more peaks between this and this, right? So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5 and the same on the other side 1, 2, 3, 4, and the 5 here. So how many bright spots are in between? Well, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, right? And if you label them here, it's easier to see, but I, I'm kind of run out of space. So in total, there are 9 interference uh, fringes. in the central diffraction peak. And if you go through this math um, carefully, you'll actually see that this number doesn't depend on L, and it doesn't depend on uh, lambda either. All it depends on is the ratio of A and D.